Hi, I'm Barry, this is Mega City Gaming, and this is Kill Team How to Play. Kill Team is made by Games Workshop and is set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It is a tabletop skirmish war game in which two or more players control elite squads of miniatures, each vying to complete vital missions. The things you need to play the game are the rule book, obviously, available in digital or paperback from Games Workshop, some dice, d6s, in fact, some miniatures. Of course, Citadel miniatures are available, but you can use whatever you want. Shock, horror. <laughs> a playing surface. Uh, the book recommends 30 inches by 22 inches, which is about 75 centimeters by 55 centimeters. But the book also states you can use any size you want. Also, you're going to need a ruler or a tape measure. Tokens are always a good thing to have on a tabletop. They help you record whether a model has moved or charged, advanced, readied, and so on. I'll explain what those mean shortly. Card tokens are available in each of the Kill Team box sets. Uh, however, I have chosen to go with plastic tokens, which I got from Litco. More options include a command roster, which is available from the GW website. You can print that out for free. It's uh, used to list all of the members of your kill team. Also, you can print out some stat cards which you fill in yourself, also available for free on PDF from the GW website. You can get stat cards for each uh, kill team box set that you buy also. Um, but this, these are pre-made characters and uh, don't give you any options really. Lastly, another option is tactics cards. Some people like them, some people don't. They come with uh, kill zones, kill team kill zones. They come with kill team box sets and they come with the uh, core rulebook as well. They can be faction specific or general or they can apply to pieces of terrain. If you decide to use tactics cards, they can be bought with something called command points, which are generated every turn. And tactics cards obviously give your team a tactical asset. For example, I'm going to read one right now. Uh, use this tactic at the start of the movement phase. Pick a model from your kill team and make a move with it before any other models. Let's have a look at one of the pre-gen characters. This is Ulfric Wormslayer. He's a space wolf, which is a kind of space marine viking. And at the top, obviously, we've got his name. If you're making your own character, you can write whatever name you want. Yeah. Uh, Dipstick Splod Cobbler, for example. And just under that, where it says name, that's the, it's not his real name, it's his uh, assignment, his uh, model type in the game. Then we've got a whole bunch of letters and numbers M, W, S, B, S. Uh, let's have a look at M first. That says six inches. That is move. M is move and his move is six inches. Next we have WS which is weapon skill. This tells you a model skill at hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Uh, ballistic skill BS. This shows how accurate a model is when shooting ranged weapons. Next is S. Strength. This indicates how strong a model is and how likely it is to inflict damage in hand to hand. Next is T for toughness. This reflects the model's resilience against physical harm. W wounds. Wounds show how much a how much damage a model can sustain before it succumbs to its injuries. A is attacks. This tells you how many times a model can strike blows in hand to hand. LD represents leadership and this reveals how courageous, determined or self-controlled a model is. SV equals save. This indicates the protection of a model's armour. Underneath the stats we have the weapons. Some models have one weapon, some models have various weapons. Uh, Ulfric Wormslayer has a lot of weapons. Uh, the weapon has some information. We have the range, which for the bolt carbine is 24 inches. Um, this is how far the weapon can shoot. Weapons with a range of melee can only be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Type. 
these are all explained later strength uh, strength is four for this uh, bulk carbine how likely the weapon is to inflict damage if a weapon strength lists user it is equal to the wielder's current strength in this case it would be four uh, anyway next one AP armor penetration how good it is at getting through armor obviously D is damage the amount of damage inflicted by a successful hit and then we have weapon abilities some weapons have abilities some don't they are all listed in the core rulebook I will explain those as we see them under that we have abilities uh, model specific abilities not related to the weapon but to the model itself again they are specific to each model and are explained in the rulebook and uh, again I will explain those as they pop up during the game uh, under that we have specialism um, each kill team must have a leader and the leader uh, creates a buff for nearby models I believe uh, again we will come across that during the game and I'll explain it as it comes up lastly we have demeanor which I think doesn't really have any impact on the game itself uh, if it does we'll mention that during the playthrough and we have uh, places to mark experience flesh wounds convalescence and new recruits let's not forget the points value at the top right of the card a typical kill team has 100 points the first phase is the initiative phase in which each player rolls 2d6 and the highest goes first in each phase this round and if the players roll the same result they can re-roll oh double six looks like the space marines get the initiative this round next is the move phase in which each player moves their whole team uh, followed by the next player moving their whole team so I'm going to go through each type of move each type of movement uh, the first one is a normal move in which you can either just pivot pivot or move up to your movement value which in this case for the space means is six so I'm going to move I'm going to move one of these people one of these space marines six inches and it doesn't have to be in a straight line you can move around terrain and so on uh, you can also move I believe up ladders and so on I'm not I don't use a 3d terrain in this video but I will be using in the future as I just painted a whole load right let's move this guy in the middle let's move him up let's move him five inches around the corner could move up to six inches but just for this video I'm moving in five and I'm next to him I'm putting the movement token there we are so I know what he's done next type of move uh, is ready uh, this gives advantage in the shooting phase um, so uh, if you've already if you're readied and something happens or what or if you move or something causes you to move then you are no longer ready so I'm going to ready someone who has line of sight to this doorway uh, this gentleman here at the back with the hood he has a nice line of sight to this doorway where two space aliens are threatened to come through so he's going to be readied and again I'm putting a uh, nice token next to him so I know what he's done next up um, advance so advance uh, means a model can move movement plus d6 inches um, and if a model advances it cannot charge react or shoot this round uh, so let's advance someone um, let's advance uh, this gentleman with the shield so his move is six plus three is nine he can move up to nine inches um, it's basically like a run so if you move you can still shoot if you run 
then you can't shoot. Uh, right, let's move him. Again, you don't have to move in a straight line. You can move all over the place. So let's get him into a position of power. So there's a little bit of terrain here. He's going to move around the corner and behind this little bit of terrain, giving him partial cover. Uh, I think that's a thing in this game. We'll find out. I'm reading the rules as we go. <laughs> so he advanced. So I'm taking my lovely shiny advanced token and putting it next to him. Um, I'm using him for all of these because I've decided they're all guys. Um, the ones without helmets on are obviously males. Um, I believe Space Marines don't have any females anyway. At the moment, that might change. Um, I hope it does change. <laughs> That's going to annoy some people. Next up, charge. Um, so, if if an enemy is within 12 inches, you might you might try and charge because the maximum charge, I believe, is 12 inches. So. Um, if an enemy is within 12 inches, let's have this guy charging or trying to. So he can charge this one or this one. Um, doo -doo -doo. So the first thing in the charge uh, movement is to choose a target. That's the first thing you've got to do, choose a target, either this one or this one. I'm not sure if you can charge something out of line of sight. Let me just check. So the rules as written don't state anything about line of sight and charging. Uh, I'm not using any FAQ. I'm not using the commander's expansion or whatever expansion there is right now. So he's going to try and charge this one. Um, and that is within 12 inches. Um, so he has to roll 2d6. Um, Roll 2d6. Um, but before that, before he rolls, sorry about that, before he rolls, the enemy gets a chance to react by overwatch or retreat, which means uh, overwatch is basically a re reaction attack, like a shoot attack or something like that. We'll get onto that a little bit later. Um, or the enemy the target might choose to retreat, um, which is a three inch move away from the enemy. Um, so he, ch he charges boop, and then the enemy decides to retreat. Um, that's before the charge roll has even been made. So let's, uh, let's decide that the space aliens I don't think they're really a retreating kind of kind of race of uh, space aliens. So they're not gonna retreat. Uh, they don't have any shooty weapons either, I believe, uh, as far as I know right now. So he's gonna charge. There we go, decided. Um, right, that's a seven. So he can move up to seven inches towards he failed the charge so he can't get within range but he can move up to here so he must move the maximum uh, as well he, he must move as close as possible um, up to seven inches um, as long as the move doesn't end within one inch of an enemy model so he moved he rolled seven he had to move as close as possible which was seven close as possible to the target and because he charged he can't shoot or react this this uh, round right so I'm gonna put a nice charge token next to him there we go failure next um, fall back so uh, if a model is within one inch of an enemy model if for example if this guy was within one inch of uh, this space alien and he decided he wasn't gonna fare 
very well or he wanted to do something else go go for an objective for example um, he can choose uh, in his movement phase to fall back so in that case he can move his movement inches away but he cannot advance charge react ready this phase or shoot this round so that's his movement uh, this round is to to fall back and that can be up to his movement away um, and then he can't shoot in the next round the, the next phase right uh, but he is not within one inch of an enemy rule so he can do whatever he bloody well likes which will be let me see let me see yeah he's just going to do a simple move to here he doesn't have to measure because six inches is a lot more than this he's just going to move here and he's going to put a token next to him which is move the space marines have all moved now it's the space aliens turn to move all their models and the space wolf the um, space marine because he charged he can't react he's wide open and he's also quite near all of these aliens i think these aliens are all going to charge so the first one is so they uh, this one's targeting the space wolf two inches can't fail roll it anyway okay um okay so he charges Boop. within one inch this one charges okay no problem yeah of course Boop. and this one charges right that's like seven inches so seven or more no no failure 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 right but he does move three towards the target and they all get charge tokens next to oh, let's let's use the red ones let's use the red ones red 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 charge tokens nice right that was the movement phase done next is the psychic phase and i don't have any psychic models today they are in the painting queue so i won't be demonstrating the psychic phase in this video but i will be doing an advanced rules video and i'll include it in there next is the shooting phase so the shooting phase is split into two parts the first part is ready fire in which um, the players take turns to shoot any readied models uh, starting with the player of the initiative which is the space marines um, and then the second part is fire at will in which all the other models get a chance to shoot again taking turns starting with the player with the initiative so in this case there's only one readied model on the table which is this space marine here and he's going to try and shoot um, this space alien right here so there's a couple of things we need to do uh, line of sight okay no problem uh, range you might have noticed I'm actually using the uh, generic space marine Primaris generic space marine uh, stats for these uh, death watch models um, because um, I haven't painted these ones up yet and I'm going to paint them up as death watch so I can use them as either so today I'm using space marine death watch as standard vanilla space marines anyway he's got a heavy bolt pistol um, sorry wrong card He's got a bolt carbine. They've all got bolt carbines. Um, he's got a bolt carbine uh, range of 24 inches. Yeah. If it's at long range, which means over half, over half, which means over 12 inches, then no, it's not at long range. So there's no minus one modifier. 
Also, uh, if the target is it's obscured, there's also a minus one modifier. Each flesh wound on the, the attacking model uh, gets a minus one modifier. And um, if the attacking model's kill team is broken, there's another minus one modifier, but none of these apply. Great, so there's no modifiers. So what do we do? Basically, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video about lo looking at the stats, the bulk carbine uh, is range 24, so that's within range. It's assault two, so that means we roll two dice because it's two attacks. And the attacking models BS, which is ballistic skill, is pl uh, three plus. So we roll three or more to hit. Okay, that is two misses. How embarrassing. Next, um, all of the readied models have been, which is just this guy. Next, we uh, get a chance to shoot fire at will, fire at will, which means all the other models get a chance to shoot starting with the space marines and then switching back and forth. However, the space aliens don't have any shoot ability and not only that, they charged, so they can't do can't do deadly squats, can't do nothing, can they? Can't do nothing. Um, as far as the space marines are concerned, uh, this one advanced, so he can't shoot. But the other two can, the two that moved, so these two can shoot. And they see their brother being attacked by some nasty, nasty old space aliens. So they're going to shoot with their bolt carbines um, at the nasty, nasty space aliens. Right, let's start with uh, the ultramarine golden boy right there. Um, so he's going to shoot this one. Um, he's obviously not at long range because long range is 12 inches okay so no modifiers there and um, so he's going to roll 2d6 and get three up yes okay so that is two hits right there next is the roll to wound so we compare the space marines uh, strength of the weapon which is four to the targets toughness so strength versus toughness which is also four which is equal so four versus four and then we could salt the chart I have a quick reference here um, so we can salt the chart and I'm just going to read the whole chart so strength at least double toughness you roll a two up yeah to wound strength greater than toughness you roll a three up to wound strength equal to toughness which is the, the, this is the case now. You roll a four plus strength lower than toughness five plus strength half or less of toughness six plus. So we got a strength of four versus toughness versus uh, toughness of four. So four versus four. We need a four up because it's equal. So two hits, two wound rolls, four up. Okay, two wounds. Awesome. Now. For each wound caused, the target, the nasty space alien, gets a chance to save, making a saving roll. On the stat line, there is SV, which is save, and it's five plus for this space alien. So for each of these, he needs to roll a five up. This roll is also modified by the weapons AP, or armor penetration, uh, which in this case is zero, so there's no modification. It could be minus one, which gives a minus one to the dice roll um, or if it's minus two it gives a minus two to the dice roll however it's zero so the space alien rolls two dice one for each wound and he needs a five up according to his save value he doesn't save either of those right not looking good for the space alien next we roll to see what the injury is um, so we roll on the injury chart and if we roll a one to three it's a flesh wound if we roll a four to six it's out of action so let's see what happens to the space alien so two wounds 
What's that? That's a four. Four to six. Out of action. <laughs> Boom. He's down. Awesome. To indicate that this model has shot, I am removing his move marker. So I remember which one has already shot. Um, next up, it's this gentleman here. And he's the last person that can shoot in this round. Um, so he's going to shoot a different space alien. I believe this one's partially obscured, if not totally obscured. So let's shoot this one. And again, he is not at long range. So he's going to roll two dice, two dice, and his BS is obviously three, so three up, no modifiers. Okay, he misses two times. How embarrassing. Okay, something I forgot to mention uh, just before rolling on the injury chart was that the weapon's damage, um, for every point of the weapon's damage, you subtract one wound from the target, yeah? Um, if wounded and when the wounds are reduced to zero then you roll on the injury chart um, it just so happens that the bolt carbine damage is one and the uh, gene stealer has one wound so the, in this case it's a moot point next it is the fighting phase which is split into two parts the hammer of wrath in which each player takes turns fighting with models that charge this turn. The second part is fight for your lives. Each player takes turns with fighting uh, with remaining models. And of course it starts with the player of the initiative, which is the Space Marines. So the player of the initiative, the Space Marines, don't have any successful charges on the table. This guy tried to charge, but he failed. So he doesn't get to uh, fight in the Hammer of Wrath part of this phase. Um, he can attack later though. Um, the space aliens um, have two charges on the table. This one also failed but this one succeeded so uh, this one may attack. So the first thing he can do is pile in three inches which um, he's not going to do because he's very close and he's all claws and he'll get the model will get tangled up, so I don't really care about that. Um, and he attacks, so he's he gets three attacks. So a a on the stat line is three, three dice. And he needs. We look at the W S, the weapon skill, which is three plus. So three dice, three plus, two hit. Okay. Quite a good roll. Two hits. Okay, from now on, the uh, the the uh, rules are the same as the shooting phase. So we hit. Now we roll to wound. And to wound, it's identical to obviously obviously the shooting phase. So we compare the strength of the attacker, which is four. Uh, or strength of the weapon which says user and the user uh, strength is four and then we look at the toughness of the target which is four they are the same so looking at the chart it means a four plus so we roll a four plus to wound with those two hits okay so there's one wound and now the uh, Space Marine, the poor Space Marine, gets to roll a saving throw, um, applying any modifiers as before. So modifiers include the armor penetration of the attacking model, which is minus one. So the Space Marine's save value is three plus, and we, we apply minus one to the dice, so four plus. Okay, he is absolutely fine. Nothing to see here. Right, so we remove that to show that that model has uh, already been. Then we uh, move on to the fight for your lives part of the turn, uh, the phase. 
uh, in which each player takes turns fighting with the remaining models, starting with the initiative. Um, basically, uh, the Space Marines have the initiative, but the Space Marines are also the only one on the board that can do a straight attack. Um, so let's have Johnny come lately here. Eric Trollblane, I've decided to call him today. Um, and we resolve that attack as normal, as we just did just now. So attacks two, he's got two arms, a mere two arms. So he rolls two attacks and his WS is three up. So three up, no modifiers. Okay, so that's one hit. And then strength versus toughness, uh, strength four, toughness four. Okay, that's a straight up four up roll to wound. Okay, that is a wound. Now the target gets to roll a save. Uh, there's no, yeah, there's no modifier for um, armor penetration. So it's a five up save which he makes. He's absolutely fine. Nothing to see here. Next is the morale phase. The morale phase. So, break check. If all models in your kill team have flesh wounds, are shaken or out of action, the team is broken. If more than half your kill team have flesh wounds, are shaken or out of action, roll 2d6. If your role is greater than the highest leadership value in your team, it becomes broken. Um, also, nerve check. Remove shaken from all models, then roll 1d6 for each model with a flesh wound. Uh, if your role is greater than the leadership of the model, it becomes shaken. Shaken models cannot do anything until the beginning of the next morale phase. So they basically uh, miss a turn or miss a round. Uh, but we don't have any of that. We don't have none of that. Um, space means seem to be doing quite well. Um, that was the basics of Kill Team. Uh, uh, not everything, obviously. There's a lot of advanced rules I didn't do. There's a lot of situations I haven't covered, but those are the absolute foundation basics of Kill Team, the game. I'm going to use those and I'm going to have a bloody good game. Well, that was a blast. I think this game's got a lot of potential. A lot of people are playing it. I'm going to be playing it a lot more. My next video will be an, an actual game and you'll see um, rules like Overwatch uh, and so on, uh, which I didn't include in this video because I didn't have a chance. Also, uh, I didn't include the abilities or specialisms, you know, the extra rules about that. Um, not yet. I, I'm going to add them into the mix um, when I play uh, my next video. And I'll be doing a lot more videos with a lot more different kill teams and it's going to be it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I've also got a whole bunch of 3D terrain uh, all painted up and that's going to be really cool too. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, that was just like the bare minimum basics, the core rule of, you know, roll to hit, roll to wound, roll to save, roll to injure. Um, so that, that's enough to start playing and then you, you just, uh, what I do is get the core rules the very bare minimum and then you start adding the extras on the top so you don't get overwhelmed um, I'm not really a rules person I get them wrong anyway um, it takes me a while um, I'm all about like the aesthetic and the narrative and, and making stuff up but anyway like subscribe comment below thanks for watching